Hi everyone, this is the Billiards Doctor here, and today I want to talk about um, my pre-shot routine, um, and which is basically the pre-shot routine of most professional players. Um, the first thing I do when I have a shot is I step back and I look at the line of where the cue ball needs to hit the object ball to make it in the pocket. So sometimes I like to put my, my cue down and see the line, see exactly where I need to line up. Then I take my left foot and I turn it to a 45 degree angle and I place it on the line where the cue is. So what I do is I kind of step into it, step into my shot, and this whole time I am staring at the object ball because that allows me to make sure I'm aligned with the cue ball, object ball, or my hand's gonna be placed. And I come down on the shot and I look at it. And when I get down, I tend to immediately do a couple practice strokes. That's just kind of what I do. I just kind of go down, my arm starts to kind of move, I kind of visualize myself hitting the cue ball into the object ball into the pocket. So I'll start over. So I look at, I see the object ball, which is the two ball in this case. Sometimes I'll put my cue down, otherwise I'm, I'm usually pretty done this enough that I usually just can kind of see the line. Step my left foot on the line, 45 degree angle. Step in with my right foot, come down. Looking at the object ball, do a couple practice strokes. Feel my arm be loose like a pendulum. So that's kind of what my practice routine is, or what my uh, pre-shot routine is, rather. Um, and some of the key things I do during the actual, when I'm down in the stance, is like I said earlier, I'm focusing on the object ball as I come down. Um, it's kind of like a sniper rifle where I'm focusing on the further target. And as long as I get the pre-alignment with the foot in the right position, then I come down and the cue ball is already lined up right, and I'm looking at the object ball, like that. And what I usually do is I first start by getting the tip of the cue as close as possible to the object ball. And that's really important. I think I remember on a, a Fool Dog email or something, I think it was Jennifer Breda or someone was saying that um, it's really important that you, when you do your practice strokes that you try to get the cue tip as close to the cue ball as possible without obviously hitting the cue ball on your practice strokes. And this is because this allows your body to visually to visually feel where you need to hit exactly on the cue ball. So you can imagine if your practice strokes are kind of out here, then when you hit the cue ball, you don't really know, when you get finally get to hitting the cue ball, the distance you have to go extra is a lot and it changes exactly where you have to hit. So if you're a very precise player where you really want to hit it on the perfect spot to get the perfect spin, the perfect position, then I highly recommend that you do your practice strokes and try to practice your practice strokes um, with getting the Q-tip as close as possible. Um, other thing I'll do is as I'm doing my practice strokes, so step in, come down, I feel my arm doing that pendulum swing. I can feel my arm going back doing that pendulum type of movement. And I, keep, I try to keep a loose grip. And that's really important. You don't want to have a tight grip. A couple players are able to get away with it, like Thorsten Homan and a few others, but most players, for the most part, have a pretty loose grip. Even if it looks like they don't, they probably do. So, for example, my grip is uh, very loose, um, or it's probably average, but it looks like it's tight. But the key is that, as you can see in my pendulum stroke, when I go back, I allow my back fingers to open up. And that's really important because if you allow your back fingers to open up, it allows you to have a better pullback, a longer pullback. So if you watch Shane Van Boning, he will do this. That's why he has such an amazing stroke. He's a big stroke. And if you allow yourself to go back like that, like lifting your fingers up, um, then it will allow you to use that extra distance in your stroke. Otherwise, if you keep it tight, you can only go to here. Because if you go to here, then you're bending your wrist. You don't want to do that. You want to keep your wrist, ideally you want to keep it straight, a little bit rigid. You want to keep it straight though. So straight up and down like this. So come in, put the 
object ball, get down, a couple practice strokes, feel my arm being loose. Another thing that I do during my, um, my uh, pre-shot routine that really helps me is that in addition to keeping a loose grip and doing the eyesight thing um, I was talking about earlier, um, I always try to focus on the follow through and keeping my tip down. So that's really important. So for me, like as I'm shooting it, I try to make sure I follow through, I keep my tip down. And then one other thing is I try to keep my body really, really still. So that comes with keeping the tip down and just kind of counting to one or two after you take the shot. Uh, I've seen that when I'm not playing well, it's often because I'm standing up early. So I'm shooting the ball, coming here, getting ready, shoot the ball and I come up early like that because I assume I missed it or I'm just kind of in a rush or I take the shot for granted. And you usually miss those shots because as you're standing up, your follow through is going from one side to the, to the other. So try to really feel your body being stable. Feel your body not moving. Feel your body as being totally stable and counting to one, like two after you make that shot. Oh, missed that shot there, but and kind of feel your body being stable and in that position. And I think that's, that'll really help you uh, focus on that. Uh, let me see, I'm trying to think of anything else that's really important. Um, well, another thing to keep in mind is do not drop your elbow. Um, I have a hard time with that. Sometimes when I get lazy, I tend to drop my elbow. Uh, dropping your elbow will give you more follow through, but it's gonna give you a lot, it's gonna, you're gonna lose a lot of your form. And the reason because of that is because it's very difficult for your bicep, forearm, and cue to be in the exact same line. And if it's not in the exact same line, then dropping your elbow is adding another dimension of your forearm, of your bicep area, kind of coming in and doing this drop. And that adds all sorts of twisting and all sorts of steering with the cue, and you wanna to try to avoid that. So try to really practice on keeping your elbow at the same point and not dropping. You don't want to do that. Um, one other thing that I like to do that I have found super helpful is as I'm taking the shot, I like to pause when I'm at, when I'm back here like this. And um, I was talking with a pool instructor, uh, Roy Pasture, he's a great pool instructor and out of New England. And he was telling me that you need to have a little bit of time like that to pause. And the reasoning behind that is that the bicep and tricep are do the exact opposite things in your arm. And what you need is you need to have, right when you're moving back, it's tricep, and you're moving forward, it's bicep. And you need to give your body, your arm, time to adjust from using the tricep to using the bicep. So what you do is you do a little tiny pause back here and that allows your arm to adjust. And what I've seen from doing that is allowed my forward stroke to be very pure, to be almost like a, um, well, I guess like a pendulum, but kind of like a battering ram almost, I feel like, where it's like, you know, you're back here and then it's all forward. You're not doing this like, this type of a thing, which you don't want to do. Um, so I do that little pause. Um, I kind of, I picked it up originally from watching Niels Feyen. He's an amazing pool player. If you want to watch some fun pool, watch him, especially in the Moscone Cup. I think he's like a four-time MVP or something ridiculous like that of the Moscone Cup team for Europe. Um, but he has a very big pause. Another good player to watch is Brian Parks. Um, he's an amateur player, but probably the best amateur player probably to have ever lived so far because he's won the US Amateur Championships like four times, which is absolutely crazy. But he has a very big pause. And I felt that when I do this pause, it really helps me focus on exactly where I have to hit the cue ball. Because what happens for me is when I'm, when I'm in this back position, I'm not really thinking about where I have to hit the cue ball, but then when I stop and just focus, so I'm here, going back, and then I'm really saying, okay, right there, hit the cue ball, it goes forward. And I found for me that that really helps me make straight shots, straight long shots, um, especially long shots. Um, 
but just a slight pause and it may take a while for you to get used to it, but it's worth trying it out. Like I highly recommend you try it out. And one thing to also think about, I guess to kind of further amplify um, the stability of when you're in that position is so important. I cannot emphasize how being stable. I've noticed sometimes when I'm lazy, like I said, I can sometimes stand up early, but one other thing I've seen is that sometimes I'll kind of, as I'm shooting the ball, I'll rock forward a little bit. And that this is not good, you don't wanna do this. So as I'm shooting it, I'll go back and I'll kind of rock forward a little bit. And you don't wanna be doing that. That's not good. If you, the minute you start rocking forward, you're adding another dimension that could possibly be of error. Um, so those are my tips for um, my pre-stroke routine. Um, and I recommend you try to try to figure what, what your pre-stroke routine is and try to try to figure out what it is and try to stick with it. Because you want to have your arm and your body be doing the same thing over and over and repeat that over and over so that when you get down to take your shot in a big tournament, it's it's already ingrained in your mind and your body is ready to do that same thing it's been doing forever. Um, so I highly recommend finding your own pre-stroke routine and the little things that you think about as you get ready for the shot. Uh, this is the Billiards Doctor. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos.